is Laura Wilson. I'm Director of Learning and Community Development at CoinSquare. So for anyone who's not familiar with CoinSquare, it's a cryptocurrency trading platform. Uh, we're based down at Portland and King. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background because I think this is something that a lot of people are not maybe familiar with. Um, you may, depending on your, where you're at in terms of your studies, you're looking at what are your career options, what are you going to do. So let me just kind of give you a little, let's back up a few years. I trained as a teacher. I went to school, I studied geography, glacial geomorphology, and education, which is a very bizarre kind of combination. So when I graduated, I had about $60,000 worth of debt, which I'm sure many students can appreciate, and I knew that I needed to have a job immediately. So I took a post in England, and I moved to England immediately after graduating, and I taught there uh, in a secondary school. So I knew I was going to be a teacher, but I quickly realized that there weren't really the business things happening and from an education perspective, which is a little bit funny because I never went to school for business. So what I ended up doing was I came back to Canada, I contacted the organization that I went to England with, and I actually said, I had a great experience, but here's some areas that I think your business could develop in, I think you could have more growth and opportunity, and so I actually started their Canadian operations. So I grew the business here, and then I then took over all of their Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, etc., and I learned international business in a recruiting agency, which I had zero background in, none. I'd had, I've never taken a business course, I'd never looked at any of that sort of traditional education that most people think, I'm going to go to school for this, and then I'm going to do this next step as a natural evolution. So fast forward, I did that for about eight, nine years. Um, and last year, in the springtime, as you're scrolling through Facebook and LinkedIn, as you do, I noticed something, uh, we're gonna, some clickbait that said, is your job about to be disrupted? I had never heard of blockchain, and I knew very, very little about crypto. I'd heard of Bitcoin, but I thought it was like a collector <coughs> coin. I didn't actually know that it was a, a thing that people were really involved in. And I ended up uh, reading this article, and it talked a lot about companies involved in blockchain, people involved in blockchain, what they were doing, use cases, so tracing diamonds, looking at supply chain, looking at healthcare, um, people talking about sending money from one country to another, not using a wire transfer through the bank, and it kind of blew my mind. I called my friend and I was like, this is incredible. Like, how come I don't know about this? She's like, well, why would you? You're not involved in tech. But she was very like, I don't know why you care about this. But all I kept thinking was, how is this technology going to impact the life that I live every day? So how is it going to impact my banking? How is it going to impact ID? How is it going to impact my credentials? Like the things that I kind of carry around as currency as an individual. So it kind of sat with me, percolated for a while. And then I'm sure people in this room have heard, when you learn about blockchain, you really are like drinking from a fire hose. There's so much information. You're constantly overwhelmed. You've got articles and Twitter and like YouTube and events, tons and tons of events and meetups. How are you supposed to figure out what can I do with this to actually impact my career or my progression or my development? And that's sort of where I was at. So I felt a bit like paralyzed because there was so much information and I was literally writing down names of languages that people coded in thinking, I'm going to have to learn how to code. I can't get into this space because I have no background in tech. And that was a really like, th sort of thought like, you're really getting involved in this and this maybe isn't really for you. So I started researching courses, I wanted to talk to some people, so I found a course here in Toronto and it was a blockchain bootcamp certification course. So I took that and I was very, very fortunate because the instructors in this course, um, one of the women is named Ileana Oris Valiente, who's fantastic if you've, ever, if you've ever heard her speak. And I was able to learn in-depth blockchain, business cases, applications on when you should and should not use blockchain. So that really made me feel a lot more equipped to have conversations and not be so fearful about walking into a room full of developers and not really knowing what to talk about. So I did this course, had to go through and complete an exam, and I decided after that I really felt like I had a huge amount of knowledge about crypto. So I challenged the CVP, the uh, Certified Bitcoin Professional exam, passed it with flying colors, and I was like, wow, okay. I think I know a little bit more about this than I originally uh, thought. So one of my mentors, his name is Alwyn D'Souza. He's one of the founders of Bitcoin Bay, which is a meetup group here in Toronto that's quite well known. And he's one of my, like, one of my closest mentors, and I pestered him all the time. 
help me figure out what's a hard fork, what's a soft fork, what happens when, if I lose my private key. All of these components that have to do with blockchain that truthfully, six months before that, were completely over my head. Um, and what I really quickly realized is the gap in knowledge between the people who are incredibly technical and so intelligent and people who are not involved in that space. They're really not, I don't want to say included, that's not the right word, but it hasn't got to a place where it's super simple for them to access the knowledge and the understanding. And one of the things that I always have explained to people is, it's kind of like when you go to the bank. Teller who's working at the bank doesn't need to understand how the back-end programming was completed. They need to understand how to utilize the system that was created. That's really how I attributed where I could inject myself and provide value in the blockchain and crypto space. So I took a lot of time and I spent about four and a half months going to meetups, talking to people, asking the questions that I felt were a bit silly. And I built um, a slide deck, truthfully, and I showed it to my mentor and I said, hey, this is how I think I would teach people about blockchain. And he was like, you need to do this. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Imposter syndrome, I don't have enough knowledge to be teaching other people about this. And he was like, you do. So I went to a meetup. He asked me to stand up. I said, no. I had my pint. I enjoyed myself, listened to everyone speak. And then he introduced me. He, he just pushed me up there. And I did like a value transfer. So I actually had people learn how to set up a wallet, how to transfer crypto from one person to the next. Um, and I was recruited from a headhunter working at CoinSquare based on that specific scenario where I was teaching other people even though I felt like perhaps I don't have all the technical knowledge. I don't have all the answers, but I do know how to use this. So that's kind of how I ended up at CoinSquare. And I think that's the, the one thing that was really important to me is that they came to me and said, we want you to work here. What value can you bring us? So then I had to go back and look at my career and think to myself, right. What are the things that I'm really interested in? Not necessarily what, have, what am I just good at? I know that I'm good at all of these you know, list of things that I've done in education and I was really passionate about them, but what did I actually want to do? So I started looking at job descriptions online, just random job descriptions. Hey, I've heard about this one time and I've looked at like strategic growth and I've looked at like operations and all these different areas of business. What am I interested in? And I literally printed them out and I cut them up and I created what I thought was necessary in order to bridge the gap for people to understand about blockchain and about crypto and how it actually impacts their life. Not just where's the industry at, because the industry is something that's constantly evolving, and it's constantly maturing, and for anyone who's kind of been involved in blockchain for a while, you can see how much it changes and how quickly it changes. So last year was really the year of like all these altcoins and all these ICOs and all these projects and all these things that were happening, and now the dialogue, while that still exists, you're seeing a lot more conversation around regulation, which I'm sure Amber will uh, grace us with some knowledge later, but also the interoperability piece. So you, if we have thousands and thousands of different types of coins, at what point do we need to look at what's the utility of us utilizing those, utility of using one, utilizing it, what's the utility of us using those coins, and I don't want to <coughs> own 200 different coins in order to operate my life. So I'm going to give you an example. When I was, uh, the job that I had previously was actually recruiting teachers to work overseas. So if you're going to move to a foreign country, if anyone here has ever moved abroad, you know you need to have copies of your ID, you need to have visas, you need to have proof of your education, and sometimes those have to be notarized copies. You also need to set yourself up financially. <coughs> so you've got to go from this country to that country. Are you going to carry like a wad of cash in your pocket so when you land you have it? Or are you going to withdraw everything and hope there's a bank nearby? How are you going to pay for your first and last month's rent? What are all of these like life things that are really impacting your relocation? So this was something that I sorted for 1,500 people a year for 10 years. So this is a very significant industry that exists. And as soon as I heard about blockchain, I thought to myself, there are so many ways that some of these challenges can be solved by this technology. So, those were the kinds of areas that I looked at. How can I implement myself into this space and where can I provide value? So the role that I currently have um, at CoinSquare is looking at internal learning, external learning. So what do people need to learn about this? But also, what are the processes internally? What are we doing so that when people interact with us, they have a positive experience, that we're able to look at efficiency, and we're able to look at kind of the growth and the strategy pieces. If I gave someone my job spec right now, 
I can guarantee they would not be able to guess that I went to university for glacial geomorphology, biology, and education. Maybe the education piece, but not so much these really specialized classes that I have. And that was kind of the main kind of point that when I spoke to Mitchell about my talk today was how can you get involved in this space? How can you take the programs that you're in and apply it? So what I really encourage a lot of like students and anyone who wants to work in this space is take a look at the things you really enjoy doing. Take a look at some of the jobs that are, exist out there. Actually pay attention to what companies are looking for and what they're hiring for. It doesn't mean that that's what you're going to look for, but you also just need to be aware. So when I got into this crypto space, I noticed a gap. And the gap was people were not able to access the information in a simplistic way. Coinsquare solves that in a lot of ways that people can sign up for an account and they can get that verified and, and go through and purchase um, crypto with fiat. But prior to that point, I had trialed about nine different exchanges. I played with like paper wallets and public private keys and treasures and ledgers and all these various types of technology because I had to figure out what I wanted to contribute. Where is the value that I provide in this emerging industry? So that's what I would really kind of push everyone in this room who's thinking, okay, well, how do I apply finance or how do I apply accounting? All of the businesses that operate in the blockchain space, they still have like traditional fundamental business. They still have things that are required. They still need accountants and they still need to have find like the uh, legal department and they still need to have all of these things accounted for. The technology that block, block, blockchain brings may change some of the ways those things happen, but fundamentally the businesses still need to operate. They still need to have compliance departments and they still need to have all of these other functions. So I guess the final kind of point that I'll leave you with is, I like to say old world bridges to new world. What does that look like? So traditional education, I know many of the students from this room are in finance, accounting, marketing. Is that correct for the most part? So if that's the background that you come from, how are those industries being disrupted by blockchain? A very quick Google search will give you some of the use cases that are being looked at. And I think that is probably the biggest piece of advice that I could give to students in this space. Um, and also, what in the finance world? So like, for example, and I'm going to give a shameless plug here, but last week, uh, CoinSquare launched two ETFs. And so these ETFs, they were not crypto ETFs, but they're ETFs based in technology. So you're bridging the old, old world with the new world, and it was done using AI, machine learning, to actually search databases looking for patents related to blockchain. That still requires the same skills that exist today, but it's using technology in a different way. Um, and I think that's really important that people understand. So I'm gonna kind of leave us at that point for now, but are there any questions or anything anyone was kind of thinking while I was speaking? Steve? What was your biggest challenge that you found? Like even after you kind of knew that you were not 100% on the technology or the knowledge about blockchain, what were some of the challenges you found when you joined CoinSquare just through the process? I think some of it was I didn't realize that the skills that I already had were so applicable in a new industry. I always thought, and I was always taught as, as a young person, you learn this thing and you apply it to the job. And it was very transactional. And when I went to CoinSquare, I, was, I knew how to build a business. I knew how to deal with currencies in multiple countries, I knew about regulations and immigration and all these things, I never thought that the knowledge of those things would be so applicable to a completely new industry. So I doubted myself in the sense that I wasn't sure, are people going to take me seriously because I don't have a tech background? And then within, like, within a few days of getting there, I was like, wow, I know I can do so much and I can have such an impact in a new industry. And that was really, that was very energizing. But the lead up to that, the transition of this is a thing I know, this is what I understand and I've done this business for 10 years and now I'm going to move into a whole new world that people are warning me about and people are saying like crypto's this and blockchain's that but as soon as I got there I felt a million times better because I could see where my value was. Um, and I was saying to uh, Saad here that my header on my LinkedIn is strive to be not a success but strive to be of value. So how do you provide value? And I think that was that was I, what I realized is where my value was. Any other questions? Do you have friends or family members that, um, that look at the way that your path hasn't been linear and 
ask questions like, why, why are you a geologist? Um, so what do you tell them? <laughs> so my grandmother, still to this day, cannot understand why I'm not a teacher. She's like, so one day, you're going to go back to teaching and get your career on track. And I'm like, <laughs> she just, she's so old school. She can't really comprehend the fact that the world has changed so much. Like, she doesn't use online banking because she's very paranoid about, like, someone having access. So usually what I try to do is I try to build a bit of a picture as to how the world used to be, where we are now, and where the world is going. So like the examples I gave you with, if I could have my uh, qualifications from university put on a blockchain and I can move to the other side of the world and be able to show that and prove and not have to take copies of my degrees. Because when I moved to England, I took them out of the frame, I photocopied them in color, I had them notarized, and I took them with me on a plane. Like, it just seems so ludicrous to have to do that. Um, and the same thing with the money. I literally had money in my bag, money in my pocket, here, there, and everywhere, because I didn't have a bank account when I got there. So how do I pay for my rent? How do I do all these things? And when I first got in introduced to the crypto side of things, I was like, oh my gosh, I could like take it from here and go there. And there's lots of compliance issues related to that. But it's something for me that I thought, wow, the potential in this is pretty fantastic. So to answer your question, I usually try to give them a bit of like a linear kind of history timeline so that they can understand an application to them directly. Because I definitely get a lot of questions. I, I, to this day, I still do. Um, but I feel pretty good about the decisions and the path that I have decided to take. So. Uh, what's CoinSquare do today with regards to ID? So you said you want to go somewhere else and have all your qualifications with you. Uh, what if you lost your wallet or something? Is CoinSquare doing anything towards like... So we don't work in the like digital ID space at, at, at all at the moment. We really just focus on our um, cryptocurrency licensing like from a technology solution as well as like we have a mining division as well. Um, but if, say if you have an account, you mean, and you lose your ID? Yeah. Um, so we have full compliance and AML measures in place. We have an entire team um, that works specifically with this. So we have sometimes people will lose access. They've locked themselves out of their 2FA or they've locked themselves out of their email. Um, so we have processes in place to make sure that people can access their account, but we make sure that it's not something that you're at any risk. Um, I think that's really, really important, and we have a fantastic chief anti-money laundering officer um, with a long history in compliance, and we have, we've, I've been very fortunate to learn from some of the best people in their industry at that point. So, what's a typical day look like for you, or maybe a better oh. question is, is there a typical day for you? I can't say I have typical days. Um, one really cool thing about working in a startup is that things change really quickly. So the role that I started in was Director of Learning and Community Development. Um, I now work on a lot of operational tasks as well because I'm really big on process and I'm really big on efficiency. How do we make things work better and how do we make people feel success in the role that they're in? I'm a big proponent of like personal growth and development um, and I want people to feel that in their job. So typical day is sort of like I work with the client success team in the morning so we look at any of the issues that we need to deal with with tickets and things that we can do to provide people with the best service. Then I usually move into something around the learning piece, so facilitating internal learning. We bring speakers in, um, looking at some of the external events that we participate in. We have a very active speaker roster, so we have a lot of people at CoinSquare who really are experts in their own right, who have joined CoinSquare as experts in their field. And so I'm responsible for making sure that that media side of things and whoever they're speaking to and involved with, all of that's coordinated. Um, and then usually my afternoon deals with process, operations, and strategic growth. So I work with our data team and our marketing team to make sure that the decisions that we're making are based on data and that we're looking at the best opportunities for growth um, in our industry. Any other questions? Thank you very much, and hopefully this was uh, informational and helpful for you all.